So every now and then, a guy gets lucky. He scours the Facebook ma marketplace, the eBay, or finds some friends that just have computer junk that they just need to get rid of for a good price. And in this case, I had a good friend. And he had computer junk that he needed to get rid of for a good price. So I got this in a recent used hustle. And I paid for this, an X7, a Z77 motherboard, cases, a whole bunch of rigmarole computer junk. Awesome stuff. And I paid $300 for everything. So when I do the math, divided by 2, X equals negative B, I probably maybe paid $50 to $70 for this setup. And what do we have over here? X299. So you have the Asus X2, X299 Tough, and this is a pretty good platform. And it also comes with our Intel i7, i7-7800X. Pretty cool. So a little backstory on this. When I got the when I got all this stuff, I went to go fire it up, and after like maybe a month of having it, didn't want to go on. So doing some testing and all that good jazz, CPU was good, motherboard was dead. Luckily, this X299 motherboard still had five-year warranty by Asus. Got on the old interweb, beep, 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 boop, Asus, and guess what? They are made it. A week later, they just sent me a brand new board. So, pretty sweet. The only downside is, is that I sent it in the original box, which was a cool box, and when they send it back to me, they just send it back in a cheapo box. So, that kind of sucks. Guys, if you're going to arm your stuff, uh, if you like the box, don't send them the box because they probably won't send you back uh, the original box. So, just kind of keep that in mind mistake on my part so, so the x299 is codenamed Bazin falls and it was targeted at the high-end desktop or enthusiast segment of intel's product lineup or ideally for workstations but we'll talk about that a little bit later the x299 chipset supports the intel core x series processors which are codenamed skylight x and kb late x all supported processors use the LGA 2066 socket. The X299 chipset was released in June of 2017 with the Intel Core i9-7900X. So now, compared to its predecessor, the X99 chipset, the X299 uses 24 PCI Express 3.0 lanes versus the X99's 8 PCI Express 2.0 lanes. Now, many features from the X99 chipsets were carried over to the X299 chipsets to include M.2, USB 3.0 and 2.0 support, flexible I.O., VT-D support, SATA Express, and overclocking. However, there was a reduction in the number of SATA ports available going from 10 on the X99 to 8 on the X299. Now, the best CPU that you could put on this platform was the i9-7980XE, which had a base clock of 2.6 GHz and it turboed up to 4.2 GHz had 18 cores and back in September of 2017 it cost roughly $1149 which with inflation today is roughly almost $2000. Now the CPU that we have with this one is the i7-7800X which is clocked at 3.5 GHz, turbos up to 4 GHz, has 6 cores and on launch it was $389. Now this CPU used costs roughly about $200. and I've looked on the eBay and the i9-7980XE is running roughly for about $400 if I wanted to max this out. Now as far as pure gaming, which does not utilize the X299's multi-core advantage, at the time the Z370 offered the best value with no question. But if future proofing was a concern and you were looking to tackle more intens intensive multi-threaded workstation applications or your heavy multitask multitasker, the X299 was the way to go. So now our motherboard. A motherboard is the Asus Tough X299, and it kind of featured mostly all that thermal armor stuff, with thermal radar 3, and just bragging about the thermal armor, which is all this little fancy stuff on it. Thermal armor says it right across over here. Supported DDR4, 4133 megahertz, had M.2 support, gigabit LAN, USB 3.1 Gen 2, and their biggest thing that they love to brag about was their tough components, certified military grade caps, chokes, and MOSFETs for tough duty. So those were the, some of the features that they were big on with this motherboard, and yeah, nothing else too fancy outside of that. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at what we're going to be doing with this motherboard and the build that we're going to put it in. All right, so for today's flavor of the build, the X299 with the i7-7800X, so we're going to be using that. We're going to be using our G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory. This is a 16-gig kit 
at 3200 megahertz yeah quad ch channel would be ideal but i don't think i have another set of that or anything else for that matter so we'll see for our storage our 5 12 gig a data which will be perfect for this build our trusty be quiet cooler which will definitely get the job done our power supply is going to be our evga supernova 850 g3 which i use this as a spare because guys this power supply is just loud with that fan and a guy don't like that too much it gets a little too aggravating so yeah but we'll be using that for this build our graphics card of choice the strix rtx 2080 because well that's what i have lying around and for our case fans, we're going to be using these, which I've done a separate review on them. And these fans are pretty flippin' awesome. This is going to be our G GIM or Jim. I forget how to pronounce it. RGB case fans uh, has addressable RGB or you can use their fancy remote. And for our case, the Lee and Lee Mesh Cool 2, which is a pretty cool case. I like it. I got this actually in a, um, a trade-in. And yeah, it's actually a really cool case. And we're going to pop all this in there and we're going to do our build. So let's get to our montage, do our little build thing, and let's see how this thing runs in some performance. <laughs> All right, guys, our build turned out pretty good. Just had to make one change. I went with those GIM fans. Instead of using those white GIM fans, which I love those fans, I had to go with these Aigo fans, which more for a color aesthetic. I like the black look on it, even though the GIMs have better RGB and they're a lot better and you don't have to use the whole Molex, because these are Molex, yuck. But it works, it gets the job done. The RGB is not too bad. I love this Lee and Lee Land Cool 2 case pretty cool just like the whole customization option of it in the front very nice very nice case but we'll do a separate review and talk about this case later so our performance of our i7 7800x this was kind of interesting our center bench scores was 8039 and looking at it a ryzen 9 a ryzen 7 1700x scored higher than us that's heck of a lot cheaper than this. So it makes you think. So now the i7-7800X, let's have a talk about this and let's just kind of address what the concern is. So number one, the price on eBay for this CPU is going for $200. It's pretty expensive, but gets even better. The motherboard, $300 is the cheapest one I could find for this Asus Tough X299. That's right, $300 and of course they go up from there. So you're looking at $500, $500, that's right, for a CPU that's six years old. Yes, granted, it has quad-channel memory, which is 
pretty good, which we haven't really tested the performance on it, but $600 for a CPU that's six years old and well, it's going to start dating itself. And now granted, if you wanted to max this, uh, this motherboard out with the i9-980XE, uh, whatever one it is, 9980XE, that CPU is going for about four to $500. So now you're looking at $1,000 just to go with this X299 platform. Don't get me wrong, I like it. It's great for workstations and stuff like that, but it's getting kind of pricey. And to kind of talk about the compa uh, someone that's a little more um, competitive on it, the Ryzen 7 5800X, which goes for about $450, 23% faster and has better performance for it. More cores, more threads. So AMD, even their newer CPU, is beating this and in fact the predecessor the Ryzen 7 3800X was actually I believe 8% faster than this it's definitely something to think about yes this has its purpose for workstation applications and editing and all that good stuff but is the bank for the buck really there for all that mo money that you're gonna spend for definitely something to consider and in my opinion definitely not now to kind of price it together if we were to go with a Ryzen 7 5800X which is a really good CPU pay $450 and then maybe $200 for a motherboard that would complement it very well. We're at $650 and we got the latest and greatest versus spending $500 for something that's six years used and you, the next level CPU is probably another $500. So definitely something to consider on that one. But overall, this is a great build. It's going to make the customer very happy with it. Um, only thing I would do different, I wish I had quad channel memory for this, but I don't have matching memory and I'm not going to go with that. Maybe we'll do a whole another video on that so guys comment down below let me know what your thoughts the i7 7800x is it really worth it honestly in my opinion it doesn't have the price to performance compared to of course amd's variants but even then just i don't know i just think it's still selling a little too much for it being as old as it is so if you like the video definitely hit the like button guys subscribe if you're not we got some great content coming in next we're doing some swaps and some other things that you definitely don't want to miss and as always we're going to see what we come up with next.